Hello, welcome back. Uh, we're going to do something a bit different today. We're not going to do any. Uh, we're not going to do any. Um, we're not going to play on Tar Tuesday. We're just going to watch. We're just going to watch the games, right? And do some commentary on the games. See if that is leads to a more successful stream in terms of number of viewers. If it doesn't, then I might bin the idea. But I thought I'd try something different. Because I'm not getting the number of views that I want. I should be smashing it. <clears throat> yeah, you probably need to do it for a while anyway. So there's so many players who are 3,000 plus. Hands on Twitch is number three, which I find slightly surprising because I think the people ahead of him are, are behind him, but are actually better, better over the board blitz players. For example, I'd say Neil Hyde-Sarring was better, but who knows? Um, but Magnus is a top dog from Hikaru. Sounds about right. Okay, we started right. Where's the games? Let's have a little look. Right, Magnus is black. Knight f6. Let's try and predict some of the moves. To be honest, there's no point in playing anyway because... Uh, well, I'd say there's no point, but it's negative to say that. But I mean, uh, yeah, why, do, not, why not E5 last move? Like here, why don't you go... Uh, he's been very provocative here. After A6, knight, you go E5. Because now the knight can go to G4 is different. But in fact, yeah, even this position should not be good for black, but... The problem is Magnus uh, plays these systems and he knows them fairly well and it's not easy to get an advantage. And even if you get an advantage, he's going to outplay you later. Like knight e4 is a move here, apparently knight f6. I would probably play, yeah, queen d2 is fine. Bishop g7, yeah, good move. You see, that's what knight e4 would have prevented. It would have prevented bishop g4, bishop g7. Yeah, now he's undermining d6, excellent move. A queen takes, you probably have to... Oh, he's actually got queen, wow. He didn't have to play that, he could have just taken back, it was fairly solid. Easy move to miss, because now practically this is difficult for white. The king's in the centre. Knight f3, decent move. Queen f6. Yeah, I wouldn't feel comfortable here at all, is why. Uh, Bishop d3, uh, maybe uh, rook d8 will be played. Yeah, rook d8 will be played at some point, I think. But also b5, yeah, b5 is a natural move. I don't, I don't think bishop c4 was a good move. Because he's just encouraging, yeah, black's already better. Uh, he's going to go like, wow, well, this looks ugly for white. Uh, knight e7, bring the rook to d8, go knight c5. It's too easy for mag, mag god. He's so strong, Magnus. Why is he so good? What makes him so so special? In my opinion, it's uh, mainly because... Um, well, there's several factors. Firstly, natural a talent and aptitude for chess. Is huge, obviously. It's just, you know, unique talent. Uh, although I think you can overemphasize the uh, natural talent, but uh, he's clearly just an enormously talented, gifted chess player. Knight c5, very good move. So now rook d8 is a clear threat. Uh, secondly, he studied chess quite, quite a lot when he was younger. Which is massive, you know. If you, I think, if you want to be a top tier player now, you have to start young. Yeah, now you're already busted. Well, no, not quite, because the computer's not giving. Uh, you put, yeah, you go at the exchange, knight e4, rook takes, and then bishop takes, and then try and play. But it's not easy to find compensation here. Maybe king g1, I would play. Knight b6, decent. Wow, that's a mistake. I think he's missed at queen d6, queen takes, you've got knight f3. He's actually missed that, which is surprising. So you've got to take this really, uh, like, almost arrogant blunder, because you use no time over that move. It's like, this guy's so weak, I just beat him 
doing whatever. Um, a, yeah, it's interesting that he played that so quickly. He didn't bother to look at other alternatives. So you have to say, I mean, what is the guy thinking about? I mean, there's surely there's no other move, right? Why is he spending? Like, it's so, it's so impractical to spend ages thinking about whether you can take on D6 or not. Just play the move. I don't, I don't get this. What is he doing? Is he just frozen with fear? It's just very strange. Yeah, so now knight f3 only move. Will we find knight f3? Maybe not. I think he will. You've got to play knight f3, man. What? That's so bad. I can't believe he's done that. That's shocking. Wow, it's such an easy win now. It's just an easy win. Hey, Queen G3 is winning. Queen G5, yeah, also good. Uh, but of course, you still have to finish off. Yeah, I'm saying it's an easy win. You still have to win the game, right? Bishop B2 is possible. Bishop G6, very solid, yeah. I mean, you could even go for the end game here. I don't think you will, but no, he, he has. And then take on B2. No, Bishop D4, even stronger, right? Yeah, that's the end of the game. They're already showing the number of um, top guesses. <coughs> so you can guess. Can you guess? How do you guess? So basically, the key moment was, um, at this point, White was not doing great. Magnus very quickly played rook takes d6. Which is a surprising blunder because he's missed it after queen takes. This is, it's very easy to miss his retreating moves. But why did white miss that move? I don't understand because it's very clear that, you know, you have to play that move. But he's, he just missed it. He just missed his retreating move. And, and that would have actually made the game much less clear. But I given the time situation, probably Magnus would have been favourite anyway. <coughs> so no high salary is black, he's gonna win. Well, I say he's gonna win, apparently the computer thinks it's not that clear. <coughs> you have to go check probably, yeah. You have to keep bullying the bishop. So it's actually not so easy because if you go king f five, I go rook b seven and bishop f eight, I go rook f seven. So uh, if if you could defend those pawns on the king side, then you win easily. But it's not actually not so easy to to prove that. And if you go king d seven, rook check, king d eight, then there's bishop b six now is the move. Yeah, now you have to go back. Now check again. Yeah. Now come back. Ah, oh, but now he's got yeah, not rook b four because of rook e seven. Right, but yeah, he's, he's done this cleverly, Neil High. <coughs> knee high to a grasshopper. I should have played really. It was very wimpy not playing right. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard to win a prize in Title Tuesday because uh, I think there's only three prizes. And um, obviously, you look at the top players, they're like, you know, I'm twenty, I'm close to 2,800. I got over 2,800 yesterday. But then I briefly fell below. Um, well, I fell below. The rook b4 looks good, yeah. But, you know, that's still like what, um, you know, to the 3,000, just to, not even mentioning people like Magnus and Hikari, just to the 3,000 players, that's over 200 points difference. Um, so that game's done. And, uh, let's have a look at this game. Yeah. And there's only three prizes. Now, they could have a title Tuesday where they had, um, is Kramnik playing, by the way? <coughs> Just see some of the names that are played. Oh, Kramnik might be playing. He's 2,900, Kramnik, I think. Yeah, I mean, look how many players are over 2,900, which is crazy as well. Doesn't seem to be playing, or he's not, 
he's not won yet if he if he is so maybe he's not playing I don't think he's playing um but yeah if they did rating prizes so say if you had like a I don't know under 2800 category or something like that then the problem is that would just encourage a lot of rating manipulation and also more cheating in the tournament itself so what you could do is you could do prizes based on uh, what the player's FIDO rating is so if they're if they're a uh, because otherwise, if you had an under 2800 category uh, rate performance, for example, then people would just try to like throw their rating um, early, early in, early, earlier in the tournament, wouldn't they? They'd just try to throw their rating. Sorry, I mean, in the normal, you know, like in the build up to Title Tuesday, like on the Monday, they might just throw a load of rating. So if they're 20 or 100 or whatever, they might just throw a load of rating just to get below so they're eligible for the rating prize in Title Tuesday. And in Title Tuesday itself, you would you would encourage even more cheating than apparently is already going on. Um, yeah, so the same old names. Magnus, uh, hands-on switches on. Uh, Hikaru uh, is not on one or two. So maybe Hikaru drew or he lost, right? Surprising that Hikaru is not on. Maybe it had a bad result. Let's go down a little bit. Which you have to scroll a long way down to. It shows <coughs> how many players there are. You have to scroll so so far down to get to. Um, wow! In fact, 188th place is crazy. There's, there's over 200 players above, well, almost over 200 players above 2,900. I didn't even realise. That's absolutely nuts, right? That's crazy. So, you, yeah, you've got to go a long way down until you get to the one out of ones. Uh, if you get past the one out of ones. Yeah, this is just taking forever. Right? Scroll down. Wow, it just shows you how many players there are. Because the thing is, I never normally look at this kind of information. Uh, no, Hikaru, maybe he lost, actually. It's very surprising. Uh, no, uh, no, Ian lost. Possible Hikaru withdrew. Um, or maybe he uh, his game is late. Let's have a look. No, he probably is on one out of one, right? I just missed him. Uh, no, it doesn't seem to be. So a bit weird there. I don't know if he's withdrawn or what's happened there. Because uh, surely his name would be there. So games. Okay. What's happening in the chat? What's the chat saying? Let's have a let's get a Magnus versus Sakaru match. Come on, why is this taking so long? Seems to have crashed. Oh, here we are. We've got round two coming up. It's true, it's a bit boring when you're not playing, right? There's a guy, there's a channel called Chess GG. Uh, that um, oh, here we go. Here's Magnus, right? So he's playing white against GMG. I'm not sure who that is. H5, good move. Yeah, this already looks very good for white. Yeah, what moves have you got? There's not, not any obvious moves here for black. Uh, just take and then... Um, you're going back, you know, what makes Magnus so good at chess? It's partly the temperament. He's very good as well. I uh, think he's got a very good temperament. Psychology is... I just think he was very good from a very early age. And, um, 
yeah, he trained on, you know, to use horse racing pilots. Whereas maybe other players who were just as talented didn't maybe train on to the same degree. Yeah, you know, saying people like uh, maybe include. I mean, Peter Lecco got to the final world championships. He was very good as a junior. Uh, Etienne Bacro was incredibly strong when he was younger, but he didn't quite reach the same heights as Magnus. You know, so again, was he a worse player when he was younger? Maybe not, but um, yeah, it's it's hard to well, Queen A eight. I guess you just take the rook. He's gone rook h3 again. A move I didn't consider. Uh, yeah, someone seems to be spanning the chat. Yeah, this is totally winning now. Oh, very clever. Petrosian like finish. Actually, that's a quiz question I was considering earlier. What is this? Um, what do uh, the actor Richard Burton ha have, what does the, the actor Richard Burton and the former world chess champion Tigran Petrosian, so Petrosian had this very famous finish against Boris Spassky where he went rook H H F. I think, I think it was against Spassky, in fact in a world championship match in 1966 maybe. Um, so what did they have in common? What did Richard Burton and so have a think about that and I'll answer that question in the next game. What do they have in common? Okay, so we got Hikaru. Uh he's winning apparently. Yeah, looks good. Let's have a look at hands on Twitch. Is he having a tough battle? Uh he's not better. <coughs> Which would be seven is a movie you'd like to play to go to f6. But then you're concerned about queen d4. He's got rook a2, which is slightly surprising, but not bad. <clears throat> yeah, so queen e3, apparently that's some kind of mistake. Rook a7, threatening queen f6. Yeah, the question was, what do the famous actor Richard Burton uh, have in common with Tigran Petrosian? The Queen D8 wins, I think. No, well, yeah, it does. Yeah, Queen D8, Queen F6, Rook F7. And you have to give up the Queen to avoid mate. That's a fairly easy finish. I'm surprised he's taking his time over this. Or maybe he's just posing. Um, yeah, what they have in common is, I think they both died in 98, well, it's maybe another way to win, right? And then Rook G8, yeah, threatening, also threatening mate, yeah, Black can resign now. Um, yeah, what they have in common is they both died in 1984. I think, I might be wrong about that, but I think Tigran Petrosian died, I think he had stomach cancer. He died in 1984. I'm not sure what Richard Burton died of. Probably cancer as well, right? A lot of people die of cancer, yeah. Uh, Prince Charles has got... Or King Charles has got cancer. King Charles III. Uh, but Richard Burton... Um, yeah, he was in that film, 1984, ironically. And he died in that same year. Uh, with John Hurt. And uh, I forget the name of the actress, actually. But he played, um, so John Hurt played Winston Smith. So it's based on a novel by George Orwell, which I believe was published either in the 1940s or 1950s. And uh, obviously it was a brilliant novel. And it's about this kind of um, dystopian world where it's ruled by this dictator, Big Brother. And, uh, yeah. Got very kind of depressing, right? But brilliant novel. Julia was the name of it was the name of his girlfriend, Winston Smith. But I can't remember the actress who played her. I looked her up recently. I think she kind of faded out of acting. Maybe became an artist or something. 
Uh, but uh, wasn't there a character that Richard Burton would have played? There would have been the guy that uh, Winston Smith character confided in, confided in. Uh, but he uh, he didn't realise. So he was, he was trying to go with O'Brien, maybe uh, it was O'Brien, I think. He thought that O'Brien, they kind of had his feeling that O'Brien was maybe uh, a little bit uh, anti a big brother himself. Uh, but that was, it turned out to be a trap. And actually he was like, you know, one of the main people. And um, well, they realised that he was a powerful figure when they approached him, but they didn't realise how dangerous he was. And he takes him to room 101. And he shows him this rap. Well, they, they kind of, like, they feed him this rat down this tube with the idea that it's going to start eating his face off. And then he starts screaming, you know, do it to her, do it to her. So they kind of both get broken by the big brother machine and, and they, and then they meet in the park. So Winston is playing chess in the pub. And then they kind of meet and then uh, they kind of talk about how they betrayed each other. And they talk dully about how there's this good news coming in from, you know, out in the Pacific or something like that. Yeah, brilliant novel. Brilliant novel anyway. So let's have a look at the standings. Right, let's have a look. Standings are a bit messed up, right? So Hikaru is on 2 out of 2. Uh, Magnus is on 2 out of 2. Billy Kimba, that name rings a bell. So we'll get who that is. Oh no, that's one of the, Ma Maxim Malakov, I think. Aryan Tari's on two out of two. Anish uh, on YouTube is on two out of two. Uh, but yeah, how much are the ratings inflated on? Um, well, you can pretty much figure it out because you can look at these people's Fido ratings and say, well, look, you know, so someone like Ali, she's probably twenty seven hundred at Fido Blitz, right? Maybe low 2700s, I don't know. Uh, but he's rated in the 2100, so it's, rate, it's probably it's probably inflated by at least... In the case of Hikaru, for example, uh, he's not rated 3000 Fide, uh, Fide Blitz, is he? So... Uh, and neither is Magnus. So it's inflated by maybe at least 400 points. Maybe at a higher level, you know, he's getting more inflated. I don't know. Because my rating is, um, uh, I'm probably only about 2450 strength for Fide Blitz now over the board because all the underrated juniors, I mean, I'm, I'm higher than that, but I'd probably go down if I played a lot more tournaments uh, because uh, there's so many underrated players now. I mean, I lost to a, a sort of, 2000 rated um, nine year old in the last Fido rated blitz I've played, so it's becoming increasingly difficult. Uh, but let's say I'm, I'm rating 2450 on chess.com at 2800, uh, that's what that's uh, 350 points, right? It's quite a lot of inflation. So when people rate 3000, in reality, um, Maybe they're 2,600 strength. You know, 3,000 is probably 26 to 2,700 over the board. And if you're 2,800 at Blitz or, or close to 20, 2,900, you know, I think Magnus is 2,880 at Fide Online Blitz, so you can get inflated by 400 points. Uh, that's pushing you up to 3,280, isn't it, in theory? But somehow they're, they're even higher than that. Right, let's have a look at the games. No, the round hasn't started yet. Oh, here we go. Uh, the round has started. We've got Hikaru. Oh, Shiro's playing Magnus. Wow, big game. So, um, Shiro actually has got a bad record against Magnus. He's not actually got a great record of uh, Blitz. He's not got a great... Um, he's a lower rate than me at Blitz, which is surprising. <coughs> he plays uh, in 4 and so He'll be playing 4 and so this week, probably, Shiro. And he's got a fantastic record in uh, foreign CLs. Uh, recently, he may have even played before then, but in recent seasons, he's got like a, he's won every single game, which is a remarkable record. 
Um, yeah, it's a kind of the grinding kind of position that Magnus tends to win from, right? It's somehow Alex Alex uh, Queen B five feels like a move here. Just defend the pawn. I'd probably go Queen B five. Or right, B five. Yeah, he's going Queen B five. So at least I'm ready for that. Maybe H three will play. Or A four will also come into the equation, but A four Queen B three is not really what you want. I'd probably play a bit like H three here and just wait to see what black is planning. Uh, he might go knight e7 round to d5. This is actually an issue. He's gone g3. Yeah, so eventually black might go knight e7. And now he's gone rook c8. Very active move. Very good move, actually. Now he might trade and go rook c4. Already black's starting to get maybe a tiny pull. But you see Magnus take his time here. He uh, respects his opponent. Like, like, the first round, he basically just, right, this guy's an idiot. I'm just going to play any odd move. But he obviously knows Shirov is a proper chess player. He's not He's not taking him lightly. Uh, even though he's got quite a low rate for blitz. Queen b3, maybe. Trade, trade. Yeah, I don't like this for white. Queen d1, maybe. or No, not queen d1, queen b7. Maybe queen d5 and go for the ending. Yeah, queen d5, he'd probably take. Now, take with a knight, yeah, that looks natural. Bishop d2, no, rook d3, rook d7. Yeah, so black's got a good knight, but it's like, you know, how do you do anything with it? I mean, h5 is very classy. So king, king g6, now king e4. Yeah, I mean, Oshiro's doing a reasonable job here. He's, uh, yeah, I would have gone king e4 there last move to prevent king f5. And that's actually an annoying move, yeah. So rook d6, he wants to take on g7. And you could take on d6. Yeah, wow, he's gone for it. Rook d8, rook d7. No, well, okay. Yeah, I'm surprised Magnus went for this, but actually rook d2 maybe? No, rook d2, rook e6. But you can't allow, yeah, you have to, yeah, rook e6 he'll play. And then rook, uh, king g7, and then take on b2. But this is looking drawish. Rook a2. Yeah, king f4. No, no, not king f4, it's blunder. Yeah, I think Shirov will get a result here, but I don't think he'll win, but I think he'll get a result. Yeah, not easy. Maybe knight takes a knight h1. Cheeky move knight h1. Not king f5 because of rook f7 and rook f2. Well, no, actually you could do that because g3 is weak at the end. So you could consider king f5. But he's now concerned about king c6 to b6 followed by rook b8. Yeah, because rook f7, king, uh, king, yeah, take on f2 and then uh, take on a7. Yeah, this is actually a draw now. Yeah, this is a draw. I don't think Manus should have done that. Because there's, there's no way you can win this. King f2. Aha, uh -huh. no, he'll probably win on time, yeah. But I, I think if it was guillotine, he would probably be a, he'd probably win. But with increment, I think it will be a draw. So disappointing result for Magnus. Unless he pulls a rabbit out of the hat, he's gonna he's not gonna win this game. Because the problem is of course if you if you trade rooks, if you go rook g seven and then uh he probably would have to try oh wow, now he's allowed. So now we'll go king g three. Yeah, this is the idea. To force the king to go to d three. But I don't see the difference. At some point you're gonna have to move your rook, but that allows the king to move now king e king e three, yeah. This is a problem. Now, maybe King G2 and Rook H3 or some... King G2 now. Yeah, sure we'll lose on time, I think. I'm not sure, actually. It's not so clear. 
you know, you think like decent Charles Magnus will win this, but I'm not so sure. Because Cheryl would know how to draw it. Like Rook H1 maybe was a move. King E2, yeah. H4. But H4, Rook G5 check. No, okay. Also, yeah, that's a good move. Yeah, Rook H1, but it's not really a winning attempt, bro. Yeah, this is a draw. Yeah, now your king's bad as well. You're not going to win this. Oh, sure. I thought he lost on time there. <laughs> no, he did this. Uh, yeah, he's too slow. That's the problem. He's why Cheryl's rating so low. Because he's just so slow. He's like the opposite of someone like uh, Naroditsky or something. He's like incredibly quick. But yeah, you know, like a penguin. He's just like, he's an incredibly strong player, but he's just very, very slow. <clears throat> and you see, he didn't really, uh, he didn't really lose, um, on position. The final position is a draw. But, you know, he just basically got hustled on the clock. Because he should really draw that, really, at that level. Like, Hikaru would have drawn that with White, because he would have just played a lot of moves very quickly. You know, with that amount of time, he probably would have drawn it. He would have got those moves out. But in the problem also, Tyler Tuesday, you only get one second extra. It's not that much extra time. So the standings now. Yeah, lots of people on three out of three. Was that the third? That was the third round, right? So we've got the fourth round and we get a break. Yeah, so what are your favourite channels on uh, YouTube? Let me know, like your favourite chess channels, and I'll try and imitate them and do a better job. But yeah, yeah, going back to that thing about, yeah, 1984, great novel by George Orwell. I think he, he also served in the English Civil War. Sorry, the uh, Spanish Civil War. He was like, um, he he fought for the uh, I don't know like the leftist forces or I don't I don't I don't really have much uh, knowledge about the uh, Spanish Civil War historical knowledge. There was the forces of General Franco. Was he on that side? He probably would have been on the other side, right? Because General Franco like a dictator, so it makes sense he would have been on the other side because he didn't like dictators. Also, Ernest Temiboy was involved in that war. He was like an ambulance driver, I think, for the Red Cross. So, we're, we're looking... Uh, any more games? Any games coming up? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Right. Gravity Chess, Jospin. Where's Where's Magnus? Maybe he's withdrawn. Has Magnus withdrawn? Because it's strange that his game is not showing. Okay, we could go direct to the Magnus account and see if he's got a game going. No games. In, yeah, that's weird. So it, it feels like maybe he's withdrawn. Is that is that right? That's strange if he has. But we'll have a look and see how uh, Hikaru Nakamura is getting on. Yeah, Hikaru doesn't have a great repertoire, I think. That could cost him in the candidates. I'm playing slightly, all these slightly dodgy systems. Uh, well, actually, back position looks okay here, to be honest. It looks okay. A take on C5. Who's he playing? FM Solid. So hit. Who's this guy? Young, younger player, right? From Uzbekistan, maybe? 92 is a good move. C3, maybe? That's maybe too negative. Maybe black will play King F8 to G7 and castle by hand. 
Um, you know, he could just castle anyway. Uh, no, it's interesting just come for the straightforward capture. Wow, because I wouldn't do that really. I'd be like, yeah, I wouldn't like to give up the dark square bishop like that. But it's quite interesting that Nakamura's made. It's a lot of decisions that I wouldn't make. Like B4 here for what I would consider. I don't like Black's position actually. Knight C6 and then go Bishop C5. Yeah, I don't like I don't like Black's position here, but yeah, he's already made a decision that I've found very strange, which is just to play take on D4s. Interesting decision though that he would do that. Um, Bishop G4 is a good move. Yeah, this guy can play. He's playing some good moves. Like Bishop C5, I'd probably play here. It might be an idea that Black could go Knight A5 after Bishop C5. The idea of playing Knight C4, because if you take on A5, I take back the Rook on C5. Yeah, I don't like that move, because now he's, yeah, he's going to... Okay, Bishop F5 and then Queen F3, but then there's... Uh, there's some attacking chances down the uh, G file. Queen F3 is a move. Uh, but it becomes very concrete. Like, you could take on D4 and go Rook C2. So maybe it might have been better not to go on Queen. Maybe something like Queen D3 was better. Not to allow the Rook in. Like, Rook G8, also very sensible. Like, Rook F2. There's Queen G3. Hey, Queen G3 check. After rook f2. Yeah, maybe knight d8 is an option to go to e6. I'll probably take on d4 and go rook c2, yeah. Because rook f2, queen, you'd be worried about queen g3. In fact, that is a very big worry. But probably have to go rook e2. Uh, rook e2 is bad. So you have to go rook g1, which looks ugly. Yeah, this has gone wrong. So, it basically in an attacking position, why, why I had, but it had to be accurate and he wasn't accurate. Now he's worse. And black has options like rook c4. Yeah, this is just very, like, torture here for white. Just no active play and poor weaknesses. Um, yeah, very sensible to play like this, king e6. So now you could just simply grab the pawn on a2. Or maybe think about rook d2 is another option. If you obviously consider rook d2 take the, uh, the d4 pawns, but either way is winning, I think. I think either move is very strong. It's a very unpleasant position for, for white. I'd probably resign here. You know, rook g5, yeah, this is a problem. No, h4, rook h5, rook g3, rook h4, and black's winning. Or h4, rook h5, rook g3, rook takes d4, black's winning. So I think Hikara is going to put it to bed. Oh, Ricketts is playing. Uh, Ricketts is uh, uh, it's a French GM called Maxime Lagarde. And he's playing against Duda. We might switch to that game, so that's an interesting pairing. So we assume that Hikara is going to win. Magnus seems to have withdrawn. Ah, uh, Ricketts lost anyway, it's sad. Neil High Sarin is playing against GM uh, Examax. So yeah, it's the same people that are dominating, right? I mean, Neil High Sarin is winning. I think Neil High Sarin is obviously pretty good. And the thing is, he can improve as well. Rook C5 seems very strong here. Because rook f7 and you go rook c8. And uh, what other move do you have? So black is totally winning. No, totally lost now. Um, yeah, this is busted. Busted. You're seriously busted. I think next Tuesday I'll just play, right? I could, I, I could play the later one, but I tend to get, I mean, I'm even really tired now. I, I tend to get too tired by the, by the time that one, it's apparently it's at 10 o'clock in the evening. So I'm just saying. I'm not sure if that's, I think, um, yeah, this is, you're too many pawns, basically. So,
So it seems like Magnus has withdrawn, unless we're missing something. His last game was against Shirov, and he hasn't played a game since then, right? Well, his accuracy level was 95%, and Shirov's accuracy level was 94%. So it seems to bring the best out of him playing in stronger opposition, because... Uh, but he's currently the highest rated player on the site, and um, I think. Um, anyway, that was round four, and I think they have a break there. So to be honest, I feel like I'm going to stop there because um, uh, this is still going. Wow, wow! Can't believe it. It's still going. But what happened? It wasn't Black always winning, right? Did um, did Nakamura mess up? They did mess up, actually. Wow, surprising. The King E3 was apparently uh, drawish. Possibly. Not sure about that. You'd have to check it on a... But normally when it gives plus 0 0.50, it's, yeah, this obviously winning, yeah. Because you, you can't win the F pawn without losing the rook. Okay, yeah, I think I'll stop there because uh, to be honest, I don't really want to uh, stream the entire thing. No, I feel very tired now, actually. So probably a good idea I didn't play. But thanks for watching, everybody. Please subscribe to my channel. So I will try and play Total Tuesday next week.